2D. For the first time ever, we're gonna play a 2 versus 3 matchup on a beautiful map, Team Real Deal, in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.22 against 3 real players. And forget about everything what you have seen in this channel so far, because that's gonna be something in the next level. Unlike the AI, these players, they know how to use their command points, they know how to use their heroes, and they also know, most importantly, how to use their power points. It means if we want to have a chance of winning this one, we need to destroy and defeat one of them as quickly as we potentially can. Because the time is definitely not in our favor. Rohan and Mordor combination. Let's do this, boys. Let's do this. Okay, Rohan is a pretty solid faction, I like Rohan a lot, because it's the most mobile factions out of all the factions in the Battle for Middle Earth 1. We have the chance to have, you know, normal Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers later on, uh, so we can kill lit literally everything, while being extremely mobile with Theory and Elma leadership, and hopefully also Glorious Charge. So, what is also important is our ally. So our ally is Mordor, and Mordor is known for the insane amount of mobility and also utility he can offer us. So later on with the Witch King and Eye of Sauron in Darkness, he can make our Rohirrim army even stronger, and that's why we need to help him out a little bit at the beginning of the game, so he doesn't, you know, get defeated, because that's gonna turn from a 2 vs 3 situation into a 1 vs 3 situation, and I can't handle that, that's not possible, because these players, they are not from today, you know, they are playing this game for a while now, they know what's up, <laughs> they know what to do, so they shouldn't be underestimated. Okay, <laughs> boys, I'm so excited about this one, actually. That's the first time I'm trying that, and hopefully <laughs> it's gonna be a success, and hopefully you guys will enjoy either me winning this or me getting defeated. Okay, we have an Isengard at the bottom left side. And also, if you don't know, we made like a special agreement, like a gentleman's agreement. As you can see in this map, we have like five players, not six, and there is like an empty bottom right spot. And we came to the, you know, agreement that no one, not us, but also not the enemy team, can capture any farms at the bottom right side, nor the castle. So, not any team or any player will have a huge advantage, just to make it a bit more fair in a 2 versus 3 situation. I don't even know if this is possible. Okay, so let's build up the stable, and also we need to recruit Eoma ESCP, because we need to get him to level 4. That's very important, because we cannot win this in the first couple of minutes into the game, so we need to get this stuff done, which we will need later on in the mid to lead game. Uh, without Elma leadership, our units won't have the DPS they need. So my ally can give me eye, this way I can get a bit more experience and get our peasants to level 2. Okay, nice. And also our hobbit Meteor of Brandybok was able to share experience, that's good, that's very good. Okay, now I'm gonna actually skip a Rohirrim and go for Elma first, okay? Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> there is a troll. And with Elma, we can also creep a troll. Uh, you can't go in against a troll 1v1. That's not possible. We need to play a bit more smart. Throw a spear. Wait for the second cooldown of the spear. Throw another spear. And then we can go in and fight the troll. Uh, in the patch 2.22, Elma is now able to level up a bit faster to get to the power spike of level 4 a little bit sooner. Okay, we got the last. That's huge. But unfortunately, we can't get the money. It's okay. Because, you know, obviously against Uruks, we have no chance. They are just much, much faster than peasants. And for that reason, I don't even bother trying. <laughs> okay. Luckily for us, we have almost a level 4 peasant. That's pretty good. And that's gonna buy us enough time for Elma. Because now we need to play around a little bit with Elma, the horse lord of Rohan, to get to the point in which you can shine bright like a diamond. And also keep recruiting more and more Rohirrim. We also need Theodin later on. And hopefully we will manage to get him to level 4 for the Glorious Charge. Which is the best buff ever for the Cavalry in the game. Oof, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be quite fun. That's gonna be quite fun. So we need to wait for the cooldown of the Spear Troll a little bit. So we can use it once again on the Troll. Oh, don't chase them, please. Okay, throw one more Spear, please, Elma. And after the spear, we can now go in and fight, I guess. Hopefully. Dude, the trolls in BFME 1, the creeps generally, are so much more challenging than they are in BFME 2 or in Rise of the Witch King. So with that being said, we shouldn't underestimate. <laughs> Look how much damage the Keep Troll dealt to our Elma. That's kind of nuts. Okay, we have one power point collected. We can use that for the, for the heal. My ally is asking for assistance. So he want to get this farm, I guess. So we can creep this, no problemo. 
I want to actually... Um, I think I'm gonna go for the um, for the archer range first because I want to have fire arrow before armory, so I can start recruiting some uh, some Rohirrim archer with fire arrows. Because as you can see, there is a Mordor opponent, and in this map, when there are so many players involved, you also get much faster money, and it might be you know very likely that this guy gonna have a Nazgul very soon. And with the Rohirrim archers, we have like a great DPS against the Nazgul, and eventually can take him down. Okay, our money is looking good though. I mean, you get so much money, I don't even know what to spend it in. We can even, re you know, at this point, we can even eventually go for Aragorn. Not the well. <laughs> I didn't want to build the well. I want to build the archer range. Let's get this. The shields. <laughs> I keep misclicking. I'm so excited about this game. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I don't want to lose this, guys. I'm going to play for my life. Trust me on that one. I won't give up. I will fight until the last building falls. There is a Rohan, and in the middle there is a Mordor, and at the bottom side there is a Isengard. Okay, we finally were able to build, <laughs> finally, the Archer range. And, you know, they are kind of assembling, they are kind of grouping up. And again, our goal is to defeat one of them ASCP. Spear throw. Come on, Ilma. Boom. Okay, almost level 4. We need to kill only one more Rohirrim and then we are good to go. Okay. Oh, if my ally is actually... <laughs> okay. I mean, they are both focusing me, uh, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. I mean, I have walls. And also balls. <laughs> I'm not scared of a 1v2 or 1v3 situation. There is already a cave troll or mountain troll in the field. We need to be a bit more, you know, careful. We can definitely recruit some more units, but I think I kind of make a mistake, you know. I was not expecting such a great resource income. So I made a mistake. Yoma level 4, that's huge, that's good. Um, I think spear throwing this troll is kind of pointless because we cannot kill him. And if we do that, we will damage him, but then he can just, you know, eat one of the orcs and get back to full HP. So we don't need to do that. And good thing is we have Yoma leadership, which means more DPS and also more combat experience. It means our units are not going to be, you know, only able to hit like a truck, but also level up way, way faster. Which again is essential in Battle for Middle Earth 1, because the more you level up, the more DPS and tankiness you will gain. Okay, fire rolls next, that's good. We can sell the Yeoman Arches directly to the Citadel to make a bit more space in the Command Points Department. I mean, in a dream world, oh my, look at that. This Isengard is ready to go. And the problem is, if he groups up with the Moro faction, with the Drummer Troll, um, they will have insane amount of leadership with the Warchant, Eye of Sauron, Witch King, and Drummer Troll. <laughs> it's gonna be quite tough. And for that reason, we need to kind of make sure to uh, use the land. If you don't know, the land works like a freezing rain on terrain. So basically, on the, on the wood, on the, on the land, on our land, the enemy leadership bonuses are completely negated. And it's like they have like zero leadership bonuses. Drummer Troll leadership bonus gets shut down. Witch King leadership bonus gets shut down. And so on. Okay, I mean, he's gonna give me like a combo, that's really good. Uh, I need to kind of stall the game until I have my upgrades fully ready. I wanna have Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor on every single one of them. And I also need Fire Arrows. Again, that's the point. We have seen a Witch King from him on the field, and yeah. Let's hope that... Oh. I don't have heal for this Witch King. Hopefully my ally is not gonna lose this Witch King. It's gonna be quite bad if this is gonna be the case, because I need... The leadership from the Witch King of my ally. They have also Aragorn for even more leadership. Let's see if he can defend this, because if not, that's gonna be a very short game <laughs> and we will get defeated. Because once my ally falls, I can't do anything about them. They have like everything but can shut me down. They have also Rohan, they have Isengard, which has freezing rain, and Mordo for the for the insane amount of damage with the monsters, and also leadership bonuses to the Isengard army. So I need my ally to pull this off. <laughs> okay, we need to guys pray for me. Pray for me, please. Let's hope that this is gonna work out and this video is not ending right here on the spot, okay? This is gonna be... Oof. This combos, Trolls, Drama Troll, Witch King. Two combos, Lords. Let's see. We need to use land as we are trampling. That's very important. I'm waiting for the Rohirrim to arrive. Maybe we can even get experience with Theorin. Let's go, 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 go. Eoma level 5. F 5, not 5. 5. Trolls. 
Come on. Now for Raf. Now for... Nice. Now for Rin. And Red Dawn. Lourdes is using Carnage, but I think he's the last man standing. They are fighting on my land. It looks like they didn't have a land beforehand. Because I, I believe what happened before they came to this location, my ally was using the Tainted Land to damage them a bit. And the enemy mortal was covering this. So, as we are talking, Isengard and Rohan from the opening team didn't have a land to cover this. And that's the main reason, and the only reason actually, why we were able to win this fight. We thought, using the land, we could have not dealt any damage to, these, to those combos. Okay, we have also Anduril's sword now for Aragorn. Anduril, the Flame of the West. Forged. By the Shards of Narsil. Okay, dude, this game is so exhausting, man. Because I, I want to win this, you know? I want to focus down everything and my heart is beating i don't know why dude and normally that never happens to me but i find myself in a, in a very extreme challenge in this game and i just don't want to lose you know i don't want to lose this game i want to win this game i think we are in a very good spot what we need to do now is we need to defeat one of them as we have like the momentum this game is about speed and about momentum now we crush the enemy army we crush his you know trolls drummer trolls eisinger army and now is the punishment time. The way you advance in this game is after you want to fight, you want to go for objectives. An objective in this case is one of the players, you know. We need to defeat one of them to turn this into a 2v2 situation as soon as we can. Isengard Mordo is incredibly strong combination in the mid to lead game. And if you add also Rohan on top of that, it's going to be literally impossible to pull this off. Because they have more command points, okay. Oh, I need to heal him. Can I do it? Ooh, the savior, Eowyn, shield maiden of Rohan, you are not able to strike down Witch King this day. Guys, my heal was on point or not? Let me know in the comment section down below. I think my heal, that's not easy, by the way, you know, fly, healing a flying hero is not easy. But hey, 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 who is here, boys, you know? I'm not a regular player. <laughs> I, I don't want to be overconfident, though, because I'm about to lose this game. Okay, we have enough money almost for the end mood. What we can do is destroy this farm. Oh, is he paying attention to his Theodine? We can literally one-shot him with Theodine, Elma, and Witch King in Aragorn leadership. Look, look. Doesn't stand a chance. We are so strong. Let's go. Uh, the one scary moment is when the Isengard of the enemy team gets Freezing Rain unlocked. That's gonna be absolutely scary moment because we might lose everything off that, you know? Okay, I think it's time for the end mood. It's time for the last march of the ends. We can also even, you know, call on a uh, tree beard to have like uh, also tree beard hero. I mean, normally we don't do that, but I think why not? You know, tree beard can also have like a momentum in this game. Okay, they want to fight us. Ooh, that's gonna be kind of look how many units he has on the field. Now for Raph, now for Ruin and the Red Dawn. I think what I need to do is kill this. Uh, we need to kill the Saruman first. That's the one thing we need to do. I see a land. My ally used the land, I think. Look, we are... Focus is very important. We snipe down the Saruman in a second. He couldn't even play the game. And now what we can do is ignore this army and go inside the Rohan castle and destroy the Rohan castle. And defeat him. Oh, he got chunked, the Witch King, from Eowyn. So he needs to be a bit careful. But we killed all the combos. It's very good. The initial trample. The, you know, initiation with the Glorious Charge. And then right before we trample, my ally was using the land. That means... Enemy losing all their bonuses, we have incredible boost of damage, and that means we can one-shot the crossbow man behind the pikeman. And if you combine pikeman with the crossbow man, and your crossbow man die, your pikeman in the front can't do anything by themselves. He's closing the gate, but <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even looking to use your gate, my friend. Okay, I mean the thing is, if we defeat this Rohan, the game is gonna become a bit, a bit easier, but it's not gonna be over. Look, you see the enemy team used even. Uh, see, it's industry on this piece, but... Okay. Now there are only two left. Dude. This game, though, I mean, for me it's quite challenging. Okay, there is another Isengard combo. The good thing is we have collected a lot of power points, including the Cloud Break, and now we are only six power points away from the War of Power. Not War of Power. <laughs> I'm talking about the uh, EOD, Army of the Dead. And with that, we can also crash. The problem is, once the Isengard gets Freezing Rain, because as we are talking, boys, our army 
is not that huge as you can see we have not many units up on the field but the quality goes over quantity right we have aragon leadership witch king and theodin and eoma right and they are like like one unit is, is as strong as like 10 units but the problem is isengard can shut that down completely and then it's gonna be quite tough so hopefully we can do stuff before this is gonna happen okay so we need to kind of reclaim a bit map control even though money doesn't seem to be a problem we can even recruit more and more units our heroes we gotta keep them alive they have like a really long revive time so losing heroes is a punishment oh mumma kills okay we need to kill him okay nice so the thing is about the patch 2.22 as you can see the mumma kill has like a dead animation and in the animation he can actually crush your armor you can't kill him anymore so we need to hit and run micro around we can't just stand still and fight that's not possible the moment kills they should never be underestimated because regardless about how much damage and armor leadership you get it doesn't really matter anything they will always be able to one shot you so we kill two of them we can now build the moment kills they cost 50 command points each and that means the open and model player can't recruit a lot of them that's not possible okay we kill two of them that's good oh i wanted to snipe down the witch gang maybe even Eowyn would be a great choice here to be honest because Eowyn smite ability can chunk the enemy witch king even though I don't think he's a problem because if he comes close to my Rohirrim Archer army I will legit be able to one shot him eh oh my goodness no! Eoma was running into the feet of the Mumma kills oh my hello darkness my old friend it's nice to see you again I just lost my Theoden and Eoma uh, like a noob you know like a noob blame me guys you have now the chance to blame me and flame me in the comment section down below i deserve it it was absolutely my fault i can't blame anybody else not the lag because i'm the host player so i can't blame the lag at all it was absolutely my fault but i made it for the entertainment pro no, i'm joking <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking i didn't make it intentionally i would never because that hurts because the punishment is there you know when you lose your highly leveled heroes and if you don't know the higher level your hero are your heroes are the more time it will take for them to return from the from the graveyard you know when you lose them reviving time depends on the level they have it might take one minute two minutes three minutes and even one minute is a long time in battle for middle fun because again remember what i was saying at the beginning of the game it's about momentum it's about speed and this slows you down a lot and gives your opening so much more time to recover to rebuild our army and you know what Saruman would like to say you know against the power of Mordor there can be no victory in late game and hopefully he was not right Oh my goodness, we need to wait now, boys. We can't really do much, we need to wait. Oh man, this is so tough. Like, it's scary, because I'm 100% certain that this Isengard now has Freezing Rain. And they are about to make a move. Uh, Rohan has no real answer to Freezing Rain. I mean, we can try to use double land and force them to recover this. I mean, cover this land. Oh, that's scary. I mean... The problem is, without leadership, we can't even burst down his heroes fast enough, right? We, we need to, like, when you have to deal with Saruman, you need to kill him in a second. If you can't do that, he will be able to get inside the genes, use the, you know, warm tongue ability, and steal half your army, you know? It's like a brain control, and he will make you kill yourself, you know what I'm saying, completely. So we need to be careful, and that's why you will always see me focusing down heroes first. That's very important in this game because heroes you need to eliminate them any hero some heroes they don't have like special abilities like saruman but they add you a lot of additional damage or armor leadership that's why killing heroes first is the key to victory and by the way guys please correct me in the comment section down below if i'm wrong but i feel like this game got harder since it's a 2v2 now <laughs> then it was in a 3, 3v2 situation because the Rohan got defeated but during this time the Mora Isengard they had the time they needed to scale 
Normally, if there would be no Rohan, we could have just focused them down early on, but now they are so strong. They have like a huge army, Mumma kills, Drama Troll, Witch King, lots of combos with lords inside of one. Oh my, please. That's the problem with the Mumma kill. It has also friendly fire. If you, if he's raging, the player can't control him anymore, and he can just charge your army, but also the opponent army. Oh, Rain! And you see, without Rain, with, with Rain, our damage is horrible. Oh my goodness, man! Eowyn got one shotted. Oof! I'm losing. Everything, dude. Please don't lose Theodin or Ilma. Oh, he crippled Aragorn. Uh, that's a problem. The thing is, we killed, uh, you know, a lot of his army, but the problem is we also lost a lot, and we feed him a lot of power points. The good thing is, we are, like, one power point away from the, from the EOD. Aragorn can't move. Like, dude, do you get... I mean, the cripple effect lasts so long, you know? I want to kill this Saruman, I want to kill this Lord, but I can't. I can't. Okay, the good thing is, Rain is going to be on cooldown now for a long time. Kill this Dramar Troll, please. Oh, level 9 combos, they are about to escape. We need to recruit more and more. Oh, my ally was using industry on me. That's also, by the way, possible only in the patch 2.22. We wanted to make the teamwork possibilities a bit more, uh, you know, fair. Because normally you can only use industry on Isengard or Mortar Furnaces or Slaughterhouses, but now, in the patch 2.22, you can also use it on the farms and also blacksmiths from Gondor. <laughs> this, drama <troll laughs> this drama troll is about to kill my Legolas in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It's unbelievable. Drama troll is thick, by the way, guys. Like, he doesn't deal too much damage, but he's beefy and tanky, you know? Okay, we should be in a good spot. Now is the time for us to shine. Now we know Freezing Rain is on cooldown. We killed a lot of his stuff. Let's hope that he wasn't able to recover yet. And we need to, in the meantime, I'm pretty tempted to even build a stake second stable if, ne if needed, because money is not a problem. As you can see at the bottom left side of your screen, we have a lot of cash, but again, we need to invest cash all the time. We need to recruit Rohirrim, and one of them with all the upgrades is gonna cost us more than a thousand. I see explosive mines now, we need to be careful. Shoot them down, please. <laughs> this guy is trying to use my own strategy against me. You guys remember when I was playing Isengard and, you know, sending mines forward to kind of force the opening to make a choice? Or use them... Oh my goodness. Look how many Mumma kills he has on the field, dude. Okay, it's time. It's time to... Oh, man, this Mumma kills, they are painful. Like, oh my, please. Die, Mumma kill. Finally, dude. Aragorn, Aragorn, don't die. Go back. The Mumma killed that animation. That's so tilting. <laughs> oh my! I want to. I want to quit this game. I just want. I just want to quit this game, guys. I want to quit this game now. The Odin and Elma, they are not tired of getting food for the Mumma kill. The Mumma Kid is happy, he's saying, looks like meat's back on the menu, boys, but I'm not happy at all about the situation. I mean, sometimes I laugh, I'm smiling, but I'm getting tilted too. I'm a very weird person, now I have a different smile in my face. Oof, that was painful, man. Dude, the problem is the revive time also. Now again... Isengard was fully able to recover, they are coming with Ballista, if EOD, but again, when it comes to use EOD, I'm a, I'm a person I don't like to use it defensively, I want to use it offensively, but I think I will have to use it defensively, the reason why I don't want to use it defensively is, if you use it defensively, you will give your opening the time to remake another army before you can make it to their castle, so in a, in a dream world, you want to go in the castle of your opponent, force them to defend, and then you want to use, you know, AOD to kill army, and then you can kill the beast. Because every time you summon something, your goal should be to achieve something afterwards. 
we need to kill the army, but then what we achieve afterwards? That's the main question. And the Mooma kills, they are in unkillable. I think I might be forced to use AOD on this spot. Because without Elma in theory leadership, my units are not dealing any damage. We need to keep the distance, shoot, disengage, shoot, disengage. We cannot really fully commit to the army because the Moomoo kills, they are wild. They are just wild. I hate them. <laughs> I hate to play against them, but I love to play with them. I think they are so good now in the patch 2. In the 1.06 version, they were kind of useless because they would... I mean, the Moomoo kills are very vulnerable against fire and with in late game you could do nothing with them because they would just die before they can get any charge off you know what i'm saying now they are more useful but also more annoying to play against because unpredictable stuff is happening all the time okay now Theoden is back now we're gonna make a move oh my goodness i was all about to attack the mine you saw that this guy is sending a lot of mines to my castle so i need to be careful about that situation yoma is back so i think we need to attack this isengard now Again, you know, using the EOD there was not very good for me, but it is how it is. It is how it is. Okay, don't shoot this mine, please. Imagine me shooting accidentally the mine and losing my Theoden and Elma once again. If I would lose my Theoden and Elma once again, I think I would have just left the game now. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit tilted here. It's in the middle of the night, you know, it's like 1 a.m. in the morning or in the night. Oh, there comes the freezing rain, huh? Okay, we need to bail. I don't want to commit to this fight because Mumukis are behind me and I, I don't want to be sandwiched, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to go in. There is an army towers in front of my face and behind me there are like two Mumukis hunting me down. I don't want to do that. If you don't know, if there, is a if there is a rain activated and there is an enemy land, what you can do is you can step on the enemy land and if you step back of it, you will have your leadership bonuses back. It's nothing from the past two point of it was always like that. Without that, there would, not be, there would be no counterplay to the freezing rain. It would be legit the best ability in the game. It still is the best ability in the game. It's, in my opinion, way, way better than Cloudbreak and Darknesses. Because in BFM1, the game is leadership-based game. And it means if you can shut it down for a minute or two, it's just huge, you know? Okay. Okay, nice. We, I think we need to ignore everything and focus down his base. Like, I feel like I'm like in a loop situation in which I'm literally trying to fight against the army all the time, but then some bad stuff happens. These Mumu kills are getting on my nerves, and I think I'm gonna just ignore them completely and just focus down the bees. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So kill this Mumu kill! Dude, the Mumu kill is so... Look how many units he killed, even with them, uh, with the Glorious Charge. So I think we need to just ignore the army coming. You see, in the minimap, there is an army coming from Isengard. The Mumu kill is still charging. We need to ignore that all and focus down the structures, okay? Especially the Mooma kill pen has to get destroyed once and for all. The last march of the ends begins, okay? Focus down the buildings. Focus down the buildings. I know it's lame, but that's the only way we can win this game. Ignore everything. Ignore that. We can use actually the ends to trample down the combos. Oh my, we are feeding so many power points to Isengard, but we have to do this. We have to do this. We have no other choice. We have to do this. Just focus down the buildings. I lost my children. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Look, this mortar is rebuying the Baradur all the time. <laughs> but no, sir. No. Kill this building, please. Kill it, kill it, kill it. Nice. He's rebuilding once again. The Mumakil is charging me down. Oh, the Mumakil got a beautiful trample off, but... Oh, you have finally been defeated. This guy was annoying, dude. Holy crackamoly, man. That's... What the heck was that? Okay. Ooh. <laughs> all right. Now we are talking. Now, it's a 1v2 situation, my, mo my man. Now, there are no more Mumu kills coming to your aid and destroying my army every single time. Now, I'm coming for you. Now, 
Eisen got against Rohan, the El Clasico situation, just like in the films, you know? Riddermark versus the White Hands. I like those. We like those. And guys, dude, the Mumo kills you have seen, they were devastating my army, dude. But it was kind of, it was kind of fun, I'm assuming, for you guys to watch me losing my heroes over and over again. But trust me, if you are in my skin, that's not fun. If you lose your heroes over and over again to the stupid Mimu kills. Okay, so, I think we just need to wait a little bit for the TOD, because we need to glorious charge, and then we can go for a, for a push. We don't need to wait for the EOD cooldown, that's not necessary. Our Legolas was actually just guarding this area, doing absolutely nothing besides fighting and almost losing a 1v1 situation against the Drummer Troll. <laughs> Legolas, the Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. Little bit disappointed, little bit disappointed, Legolas, little bit disappointed. Okay, we need a second well. I feel like our healing is not that good, because we have too much army, and the heal radius is not that big, so we need a second well. And then we should be good to go. Dude, I'm about to lose my voice too. What? Okay, Theodine, come on, come on, Theodine. I need you, brother. I need you. But this was a good game, man. Oof, Theodine is back on the menu, boys. You know what time it is. It is time for for Lord and Land, as Elma would like to see. Okay, my ally is actually kind of going ham, but he's feeding power points, and hopefully, this Isengard has no Balrog. Because if he has Balrog, he has the chance to destroy my castle. Okay, so Ant Mood, uh, because without Ants, you can defeat Isengard. Just like in the films, you know, we need to attack this Orphan with the, with the tree beard. That's the plan. Okay, so Aragorn leading the army just like in the Black Gate. And we have now a huge Rohirrim army. Gondor calls for it. And Rohan will answer. Master the Rohirrim. Okay, boys. Now for Wrath. Now for Ruin. And the Red Dawn. Do it. Okay. Let's go. Does he have Freezing Ring? I don't know. I want to kill Saruman. I see Saruman. I will, I will kill him. With all my army, I will focus him down. Also, spear throw with Elma. I don't. I just don't want to give him the chance to, you know, steal my army. Okay, we will kill him. He used the rain, but if you don't know, the rain isn't able to negate the effect of the glorious charge. Glorious charge is like a spell; it can't be negated. Okay. Okay, nice. Ooh. Okay, that's it, boys. That's it. Oh, the Balrog of Morgov is in my castle. Maybe that's not it. I will not leave. It's a base rush at this point. Oh my goodness. I'm not even checking my base, by the way. I don't know. I just want to focus on his buildings. That's what you are. Sh what you should never do. If you are looking or, you know, finding yourself in a base rush, in a base street, you don't want to check constantly what the enemy is doing. You want to focus on your own thing. And let the fate decide. Because if you focus too much on the Balrog, you can't win, right? GG's gonna be cold. GG's indeed. Well played. And look, look, I didn't check it. And that's why I was able to win. GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, keep hitting like a truck. And stay beyond standards. Peace out.